what a year it has been, huh? It's not quite over yet, but you know, at times like this, I do actually get into my head and reflect. And one of the things with regards to my orchid collection has always been this year, especially the budget. I don't have a limitless budget. I have now a very substantial collection. Thank goodness I could afford all of this before 2020 hit. However, this year, everything changed as for many. So I'm going to go through some pointers and what I have done in order to be able to afford taking care of the orchids that I have because there is a cost factor involved. And all of that, well, looking at just opened Neo Stylus Loose Neary Blue. But more about this orchid in another video. So let me show you what I do and how I grow my collection now on a budget. So the first thing in my head is a cost factor. Obviously, you have to count the pennies. You still want to have the orchids grow. And every country is different, but here in Spain, electricity is super expensive. It is incredible, the ratio between the cost of electricity as opposed to the cost of water. And something that we don't have limitless access to is water with our drought situations, our five, six months of no rain. But electricity turns out to be the most expensive cost factor of my orchids. And I'm going to start with that. So I'm very, very conscious of running lights because as they stand here and as they grow, you see how much sun is coming in. I am fortunate to be able to live in this climate. And now the middle stand, I've switched off the lights. I do not run a timer. That is one of the elements of costs that I did not invest in in order to keep things somewhat controlled. I splurged on orchids as opposed to kit. But I now, for three hours, have switched the stand light off because the angle of the sun comes straight through and gives them enough light for three hours as they would possibly have in nature if, let's say, the sun went behind a tree, for example. Even my very, very high light growing orchids, for a couple of hours, they don't get any light at all. And last year, actually, I even switched off these shop lights. But this year, the orchids have been growing and I don't want to stop their momentum, especially some of the struggling ones. They seem to be an act of growth and I just, I really, really don't want to stop their momentum. So I'm biting the bullet and I'm keeping the shop lights on, even though the sun will come up through into this angle on a sunny day. But yeah, I don't, I don't want to stop it. Um, I've been fighting so hard this year. This little luxury of leaving the shop lights on is something that I shall just accept. But when it comes to electricity, I definitely, now that I'm home all the time, I really control when I put the center stand on because in my opinion, it might just be for three hours do that every day for a month every little bit adds up it accumulates so i switch off what i can and what i can get away with and i fully fully get that i could switch these lights off and the orchids would just have to be the way they are they will stop growing and be more dormant if so to speak until such a time that they go outside so push comes to shove, if things get worse, then that's what I will have to do. No lights and, and just make sure that usually I have the time to carry out all my orchids and distribute them outside in order to enjoy that natural sunlight, at least for from 10 to five, which cuts my costs down radically. However, this year I have a puppy to deal with and I have to be around him, watch him very closely when he's on the move. And he happens to be on the move at 10 a.m. in the morning and then it's just play time, bounce time, training time. And I am not carrying out 180 to 200 orchids with a puppy bouncing around between my feet. I am clumsy enough as it is. 
that is a recipe for disaster. Definitely last year I was taking out orchids in the morning and bringing them back in at around 5 p.m. before the temperatures drop too much. Not including the orchids in bud. So that's how I deal with my budget regarding growing this collection indoors during the cooler months of the year. Another way I have cut down on electricity is I don't use a humidifier. I have enough humidity in the winter indoors. I don't need a humidifier, but I do supplement with humidity trays, which I control regarding how much water goes in and evaporates because depending on the ambient humidity. So no electricity is being used by a humidifier. And in the summer, my orchids are outside. So I don't use a humidifier. I have also stopped using heat mats, despite the fact that you see them here. Because the first winter I had my orchids, I was thinking this is all too cold, especially with my grow set up here in Lekka, semi-hydro, self-watering. Those roots are cooler inside that media than the ambient air is. And for me, heat mats, oh my goodness, I need them, I have to have them and I had every single shelf and rack decked with heat mats. But it turns out that I lost orchids despite heat mats anyway. And my second winter with the kids, I thought, no, if I'm gonna lose orchids regardless of temperature, climate, and heat mats, then I'm not going to on top of that waste electricity by switching my heat mats on. So these right now only serve as a drip barrier. And there are no lights attached at the bottom of these shelves. So I leave these on just to make sure that if I have, let's say, a mounted orchid that's here, she's above some humidity, I can spray and it just drips into the tray. No heat mats anymore. Quick add-on thought regarding humidity trays. It doesn't have to be a humidity tray. It can also just be bowls of water or saucers of water, as long as they're a little bit deep enough and you put some kind of a pebble or stones or something inside in order to break up the surface tension because the humidity expulsion will be much, much greater if you break the surface tension. So on a budget, anything from the kitchen, Tupperware, anything filled with water. If you add soap into that water, even better, just a little dollop of dish soap, it will attract the fungus gnats and no problem. You've got humidity and a little insect control going all at once. Taking the heat mats out of my growing setup for the winter limits me as to transitioning orchids into this new media setup if they have come in new. So that is a thing that I always now keep in mind. I make sure that I try to time it correctly and then if there has to be a transition that needs to be done simply because the orchid is still in the old media that it came in, then I make sure that when I do transition her, I put her in the warmest place of the property inside this grow area where the roots will not get so cold. So I avoid anything close to the window during the nighttime. But during the daytime, I would position the newly transitioned orchid right by the window on a sunny day so, so that the heat will then help me warm up the media. Works really, really well. Yes, it's a bit of a fiddle because at night, then I move her away because it does get a little bit cooler by the glass. But you know what? I'm home. I have the time. So in order to cut, cut the cost and still do the work with the orchid according to what is required, I do then transition based on what the orchid is telling me regarding root growth but I make sure then to position her always in a very warm spot and move it away and put it, keep her warm during the night in an area where there is not so much of a draft. RO water, water, buying the equipment, maintaining the equipment, it's all a cost factor. The filters have to be changed on a regular basis. I don't get much rain in my climate and I have exceptionally poor water quality coming out of my faucet. If you have a climate that blesses you with a lot of rain, collect that rain water. It is one of the best things you can give your orchids. I don't have that luxury, 
but uh, I did want to point out that when I can, I put out everything that I have and I collect rainwater so that I am not taxing my filters all the time. Another thing I've also done this summer is actually go half and half of RO water with my tap water on my Vandas just to see how they would do. I am not happy with the results yet, but my Vandas have been really, really stressed anyway throughout the summer because I think their size just got way too much for what I could accommodate them with regarding humidity. So I did go half and half and then I went even further and did full tap water into my Vanda bucket tub, mini pool that thing is. And then I waited 24 hours for whatever residue of chlorine or you know what they put in there in order for it to be consumable for us. I let that just evaporate, deteriorate, and then I use it for my Vandas. Plus I add fertilizer, but I'm not comfortable with that choice. It is a needs must situation based on the fact that I'm trying to grow in a budget now. So the Vandas will have to adjust if they want to stick around. Then if they can't adjust, then there's no more big Vandas in the collection of Ninja Orchids because I am getting some signs of very unhappy roots. But for me, if I can, I do collect rainwater. I don't have a rainwater butt. That is another investment that I didn't invest in. But when I can, I put all the pots outside that I have and the empty buckets, and I collect as much rainwater as I can. Massive, massive cost saver for me and my collection this year, more than I ever, ever expected was the choice of inorganic media. I mean, I switched to semi-hydro simply because I've been growing houseplants in semi-hydro since the 80s when it started to hit Germany and I just love the clean approach of semi-hydro, the lecker, and instead of messing around with dirt inside a house. Switching orchids to inorganic media was for me just a question of time when Spain was actually able to get leca that didn't float into their garden centers. So I made the switch. First of all, yeah, I like the clean growing and secondly, I like the control. This year, however, it became more and more a lifesaver for me because I had approximately 45 up to 50 orchids to repot and I would not have been able to afford all that organic media if I had to buy it in in order to do all the orchids that needed the work done justice. So for me, the cost saver of the season, the year, on my budget was the fact that I am growing inorganically. I have just recently added terrarium grit to my mixes. I'm working to see how that works as opposed to perlite, which is something that I, I find extremely water retentive and I might need to mix and match a little bit the dry aspect towards the very humid and wet aspect. So that's new, but my go-to is Lekka. I work with it depending on the size of the orchid, the size of the roots. I sometimes pick out the tiny Lekka, or if need be. And then I have large lava rock and small lava rock. This year, I did not need to buy a single bag of Lekka. Everything that was repotted was cleaned, boiled, sterilized, and is stored in a bucket of RO water all the way up to the brim, so no lecca is exposed. It's always completely submerged. I can clean my lava rock, same principle, boil, sterilize, let it dry out, and then put it into their tubs. I have ceramis in my mixes, same thing. I've been using ceramis for over three years now. And only once did I need to buy it in because I got some more orchids in that uh, the Rapiculus Lelias, I grow them with Ceramis. And I used more Ceramis this year because I got more Rapiculus Lelias in. But big cost factor for me, a budget saver. It didn't break the bank at all. My inorganic media and I swear by it. 
So I now have another contemplation. I've been buying an MSU fertilizer for a good part of two and a half, three years. I still have some left because I buy a lot of it, but it is very expensive to import that into Europe. I have to do a lot of customs and then on top of the cost of buying and shipping from the US, I have to pay customs at my end. And I'm going to hold that thought because look, I'll be right back. Yeah, that's not happening. Huh. It's such a mild winter. I am not complaining. I prefer it this way, but no bugs are being killed off by cold temperatures. And I am like a hawk over these orchids and their blooms. Back to fertilizer. I fertilize at 300 ppm. All my deposits, that's okay. Let me qualify that. Most of my deposits have 300 ppm based on the fact that the orchid is actively growing. However, in order for me to cut cost, I will be reducing that amount and not have to buy in some more fertilizer. And I plan to move to rain mix when my MSU runs out. But in the meantime, I'm being very, very prudent about my fertilizing regime. Because at the end of the day, the orchids will grow with less fertilizer. My ego tells me if I give them 300, that will cover my hungry orchids and it will cover my smaller, not so hungry orchids, but they get a more regular flush, if that makes sense, because a lot of what I do for the smaller orchids is spray them. Now, I've also recognized my mistake with regards to my telumnias and my high fertilizing amount for them. And that is working in my favor now because as I'm reducing fertilizer in order to stretch what I have in stock, I will be also doing possibly some of my orchids a favor and not stressing them with too much mineral in the pot before I get around to flushing them again. I still have to watch the big phalaenopsis because they're hungry. I still have to watch my cattleyas. But what I'm gonna change is obviously now, because I have the time, the ones that really need the 300 get the 300, but it's not going to be across the entire collection. So that is how I'm, go I'm going about it now. I'm looking at the pots individually, and I am incorporating a mix when needed of 100, 150 parts per million, as opposed to 300 across the board, just to stretch my resources a little bit. And finally, just for a little bit of added humor, there's one thing that I can do in order to maintain my budget at these, during these difficult times, and that is don't buy any more orchids. That'll take care of things pretty quickly. <laughs> Stick with what you've got. And here comes the power of the subconscious mind. If any of the orchid growers making videos do unboxings. I am not watching. I am refusing to watch unboxing videos because I am way too weak in my mind to say, ha oh, ha, and then suddenly triggers something in my head and end up, at the end of the day, I'm adding to cart and punching that sale button. <laughs> that is stating the obvious, but I also want to put a quick disclaimer in that. I shall not be watching any more unboxing videos for as long as I think I am strong enough that my subconscious mind doesn't trigger something two weeks, three months, six months down the line. That is the plan. And I really hope that I can stick to it because it is super important. I don't have any local nursery that I can go to. Everything I do needs to be shipped in when it comes to orchids and the shipping costs have gone up exponentially. So yeah, if I'm in a weak moment, I shall not be watching unboxing videos. Eventually I might catch up, okay? That is the reason you may not see me if you're getting orchids for Christmas going woohoo, simply because, uh, you know, I'm weak in that way. My subconscious mind is stronger. <laughs> And for that reason, I'm just going to move straight into something else. I have canceled my newsletters from the nurseries as well, because they would obviously send in newsletters regarding discount orchids that they have on offer for the month. 
I would be very, very interested in that. And then I look through and then it's like, oh, really? Uh-huh. <clears throat> okay. And boom, you land on their main web page. Anyway, for the time being, I've canceled all my newsletters. I don't, I don't need the temptation. I know what I'm looking for in my mind. I know that there's some more ridiculous lelias I want, but enough, enough. The reality is at this point in time, I have 300 plus very, very gorgeous creatures that surround me. Probably about 25, 30 of those need my full-time attention. The other ones are just, you know, doing their thing. So that's it. I have made myself a list. I have it in my notebook, my journal, and I look at it on a regular basis to remind myself of all the points I've just mentioned today. So with this video, I put it on record. <laughs> <laughs> and I must say that if you're still here and still listening and you don't find yourself in a similar situation, thank you so much for humoring me and for listening and for just, you know, taking it on board. If by any chance anything of what I've said resonates with you and it would be all right for you to share that with me in the comments below, I would really be appreciated to hear what your thoughts are about growing orchids on a budget. Do you have to, don't you have to? And if you do or don't, but you still do, does that make sense? <laughs> Let me know how you do it, because I could always add to my list of what I'm going to do, my rules, my personal rules. Anyway, thank you very, very much. I appreciate your support, your time, I hope that you all stay super safe, please. I know it's almost Christmas, but think what are the repercussions after Christmas. So please stay safe. Much love from Spain to you. Bye.